This video is sponsored by Objective Control, a new brand of objective markers and play accessories made out of non-scratch transparent polymer. Objective Control is currently available on Kickstarter. More about them later on in the video. What's up, folks? Welcome back to Zazka Tortoise. My name is Trevi, and today we are talking about Space Marines, specifically aggressor squads, how to use them, how much damage they deal, and a combination that can get absolutely ridiculous damage out of their little bolt storm weapons. If you enjoy my Warhammer 40k content, just a reminder to like the video, subscribe to the channel, do the YouTube things that we talk about in every video, and I think everyone talks about. I'm unique and an individual person with my own thoughts and feelings. I'm a real boy! Now, as a little bit of a caveat, we are staring down the barrel of a brand new Space Marine Codex, which I think is probably only going to improve this unit. While there are going to be some mechanics that are changed, there's going to be less wound rerolls available for them, for example, thanks to the changes to Oaths of Moment, they are going to be getting a brand new detachment that is geared specifically around units like aggressors. In addition, we also have confirmation that the Gladius Task Force, the detachment that we're going to be covering today in the combination with aggressors that we're going to be talking about is remaining unchanged. So I don't believe, unless there are significant changes to unit data sheets, which I'm not really expecting, that the core concept of this video is going to change. So if you're watching this after the 10th edition Space Marine Codex releases, it will most likely be still valid. Uh, if it's not, I'll, I don't know, maybe I'll unlist it. Or just put a comment down in the comment section below. I would hazard a guess, though, that this video isn't really going to change with the new Codex. You'll have more, even more cool things to do with a Aggressors. Now, what is the Aggressor Squad? At its base level, it's a unit of Gravis-equipped, close combat-focused Space Marines with a pretty impressive top-line profile. They are slow, unfortunately, but there are ways to mitigate that low movement of five, and they come in at a high toughness of six, solid three-plus save and three wounds, however, a low objective control value of just one. Now, that toughness of six is good to protect them from small arms fire. Strength five heavy weapons are going to be wounding them on fives, and low Low strength light infantry weapons like las guns and auto guns are really going to bounce off these guys. They're wounding on sixes and then you get your three plus save against them. Aggressor squads are mostly here for crowd control. They want to be fighting against strength three enemy troops, in which case they're going to be taking very little damage. However, heavy anti-tank or even anti-heavy infantry weapons, you can think about things like Tyranid Exocrines that have a medium strength value, but lots of three damage blast attacks do actually wreck aggressor squads. So, you do have to baby the unit a little bit to keep them safe from these dedicated anti-heavy infantry weapons. Fortunately, you have some ways to do that that we'll talk about later on towards the end of the video. Game aids like objective markers are becoming a staple in the Warhammer 40k community, but the most common version of laser cut neoprene style objective markers have some huge flaws, specifically that they're enormous and pull you right out of immersion in the game. And that's why I'm excited to talk to you today about objective control. Objective control is a brand new series of clear plastic game aids and objective markers that you can use to spruce up your games of Warhammer 40k. If you're watching this video on release, objective control is live on Kickstarter right right now, and you can head on over in the link down in the video description to pledge for your set. This line includes a wide variety of available accessories, including the aforementioned objective markers, battle shock tokens with extremely cute artwork on them, deployment zone markers, precision measuring tools, as well as terrain bases for the most commonly used Leviathan ruin layouts. This makes setting up your games of Warhammer 40k way easier, and with their clear finish, you're able to see the mat and your terrain through these bases. Instead of putting an incongruous big picture or large printed section on the table. Using clear objective control markers, you can still see where the objectives are on the table and place your models accordingly, but your immersion isn't pulled out. On top of that, the slim design also prevents models from falling over or being cocked, making it easier to play precision gameplay and make tight movements. The plastic being used here is scratch resistant, so you don't have to worry about them fogging up from repeated use. And one big advantage of the material is the fact that you can actually write on it with a dry erase marker. So head on over to the link down in the video description and the pinned comment to check out Objective Control on Kickstarter. Drop your pledge today and get control over your gaming accessories.
Breaking down their weapon options, Space Marine Aggressors have two sets of ranged weapon options available to them. Either the Flamestorm Gauntlets, a twin-linked D6 plus one flamer weapon, or Auto Boldstorm Gauntlets. Now the Boldstorm Gauntlets are interesting because they have an expanded range. These are range 18, strength four, three attack weapon. Again, with that twin-linked ability, so they're gonna reroll their wound rolls because there's one on each fist. On top of that, they also get a Frankstorm Grenade Launcher if equipped with their Boldstorm Gauntlets. This gives them an additional D6 blast strength for attack. The downside of the grenade launcher is that it itself is not twin linked, only the bold storm gauntlets that these guys have on their fists. So it has less access to rerolls to wound. Currently, you can give them rerolls to wound from O's of Moment. However, that will be changing in the future, but I'm sure they'll get other ways to benefit themselves. So all told, you basically have the option to take either a very good overwatch weapon, a D6 plus one damage torrent weapon that automatically hits and ignores cover or a longer ranged higher volume weapon, better against larger hordes of enemies. What we're gonna be focusing on today is the auto Boldstorm Gauntlet and Fragstorm Grenade Launcher composition because it's able to force more shots out of the unit and has some very useful synergies with hit roll modifiers. Unfortunately, the Flamestorm Gauntlets don't roll to hit, so they don't get any synergy with things like lethal hits or sustained hits, so we're not gonna be talking about those today. They are definitely still a pretty solid option if you're looking for a unit that can hold down the middle of the table, especially against infantry and Overwatch. My turn. They're very, very dangerous in Overwatch, but if you're looking to do damage in the shooting phase, the Bolt Storm is the way to go. Now, on top of that, the Aggressor Squad also supplements that the Close Quarters Firepower ability. This gives them plus one AP when targeting the closest eligible target. Fortunately for them, their range sucks. 18 or 12 inches is not very long range, so 90% of the time, they will be shooting at the closest. Now, one important thing to keep in mind about this is that the which target is the closest locks in after the unit begins shooting. It does check on a per model basis, so models could potentially be closer to two separate enemy units individually. It's not looking at which unit is the closest to your unit, it's looking at which enemy is the closest to each model. So how can we absolutely abuse this unit to do massive damage? And why is it becoming the mainstay of Space Marine armies past the data slate update to the game? The big addition here is a new unit released in the Leviathan boxed set, the Apothecary Biologus. This guy is a bit of an interesting character. He's a Gravis armored apothecary, but he doesn't really have have very apothecary themed abilities. Instead, he's more focused on dissecting his opponents and instructing his team where to shoot them to kill them most effectively. While he's joined into a unit, he grants them the lethal hits ability. This means that on critical hit rolls, you're gonna automatically wound and not have to roll the wound roll. That's a big deal, especially for the low strength frag storm grenades and bolt storm gauntlets that we're gonna be shooting out of these aggressor units. On top of that, he also brings a two damage absolver bolt pistol himself, which is pretty nice and also benefits from that lethal hits if he's leading a unit. And he has a situational ability to destroy an enemy unit in melee and then increase his objective control characteristic to nine. Importantly, he himself is actually objective control three. So he dramatically improves the ability of the unit to control an objective because they are normally OC one. Now, what we're gonna be comboing this character with is the Bolter Discipline Enhancement. Bolter Discipline might be one of the best enhancements in all of Warhammer 40K. Not only does it give you a hugely powerful effect to whatever unit that the character is attached into, sustained one on their ranged weapons, it also grants an additional benefit if you are in Devastator Doctrine. It moves your critical hits from sixes only down to five ups. Now the big combination here is that that also affects the lethal hits from the Apothecary Biologus himself. Instead of just triggering on sixes like it normally would, if you are benefiting from the second clause of Bolter Discipline, you are then getting lethal hits and sustained one with the enhancement on a five up instead of a six up. Now the requirement of that is to be in Devastator Doctrine, but fortunately we do have the adaptive strategy stratagem that allows a unit to flip into that doctrine whenever you want it to. As long as it's targetable during your command phase, you can assign the doctrine to them. They're gonna get Devastator Doctrine instead of whatever else you choose, which not only gives them the ability to advance and shoot their short range weapons, which is huge. One of the biggest ways that we have to improve their threat range, but also then gives them this critical five up effect to 
trigger all of their weapon abilities. Now, if we want to push this damage even farther, we have the Storm of Fire stratagem. This is a battle tactic stratagem, so it is available for use with free stratagem abilities like Rites of War or Robute Gilliman's Aura, and gives the unit Ignore Cover. That's already big for a low AP weapon that doesn't have a lot of optionality where it's going to shoot. Usually your, your angles are going to be cutting through cover, at least at some point, so getting Ignore Cover is kind of the equivalent of an additional plus one AP. On top of that, if you are in Devastator Doctrine, which you will be because we're using Adaptive Strategy on the unit to put it into Devastator Doctrine if we don't have it already, you also gain an actual plus one AP. If you can stack this on top of the Close Quarters Firepower ability that the aggressors already have, you're getting them to AP2 base with Ignore Cover on top of that. Suddenly, these Strength 4 AP0 weapons aren't looking so weak, and they're actually going to be dealing quite a bit of damage once we get to the shooting phase. All that together, we can also apply some hit rerolls from Oaths of Moment. We may also have some other hit reroll effects in the new codex. I'm certainly hoping so. Now that uh, Oaths of Moment has been depowered a little bit, and currently Oaths of Moment also grants wound rerolls to the Fragstorm grenade launchers in the unit as well. The Boltstorm gauntlets are already getting wound rerolls from Twin Linked, so they don't necessarily lose too much out of the total damage of the unit once the Oza moment change comes through, you'll just be losing a couple of rerolls on the uh, Fragstorm grenade itself. However, with that current version of Oza moment, it basically makes the Fragstorm grenade shots and the Bolter shots almost identical. They're both going to be rerolling hits and wounds and benefiting from all these weapon abilities, and their baseline profile is exactly the same. So with all that in mind, how much damage can we expect from this unit? The answer is a lot, like just a, an absolute dumpster full. Each of these individual models, assuming that we get an average number of hits on a random shot Fragstorm grenade launcher, which would be D6 shots per model for an average of 3.5, 6.5 times with full rerolls at strength 4 AP2 once all of the combination has been enacted. Now we're taking the 6.5 average shots and we're going to be fishing for critical hits to trigger all of our weapon abilities. On average, looking for a 5 plus for critical hits, we're going to be getting 2.17 just about on the first roll. We're going to then pick up the those remaining 4-ish dice and roll them again to try to get additional critical hits to get an average of 1.4. So we're getting about 3.6 critical hits in total, which is going to convert 3.6 of those on average automatically, and then also generate 3.6 additional wound rolls thanks to sustained one. We also get 1.44 regular hits for a total of 5.04 total normal hits between the sustained hits from the criticals and the regular hits that we rolled naturally. On top of that, we're getting 3.6 lethal hits per model. Now these convert on average, assuming that we're shooting at something that we're winning on sixes, so something toughness eight or higher, it gets so much more lethal if we're shooting at infantry or uh, even other space marines, heavy infantry, stuff that you're winning on fives just gets shredded by these dudes. But we're gonna assume that you're shooting at maybe the worst target imaginable, which is something like a land raider. We're gonna be wounding these things on sixes, which averages 0.84 regular wounds from the five-ish regular hits that we generated from our hit sequence. On top of that, we're going to be re-rolling thanks to either Twin Linked or O's of Moment and getting another 0.7 regular hits on top of that for a total of 1.5 four. So altogether, between the normal and sustained hits that we've rolled and then re-rolled our wounds on, and the lethal hits that we got from our expanded criticals, we're getting 5.14 saves forced on the target per aggressor in the squad. This means for a max squad of six, you're going to be forcing almost 31 saving throws on that unit from a range of 18. Assuming that you're benefiting from both Storm of Fire to get Ignore Cover and plus one AP, as well as the plus one AP from Close Quarters Firepower, these are coming in at AP two. So a two plus save on something like a Land Raider is gonna be reduced to a four plus. This means that you can expect between 15 and 16 failed saving throws if they have that base two plus save or are forced onto a four plus invulnerable save. If their save is worse, like a base three plus save, you actually can expect 20 plus damage on them. Meaning that basically no three plus base save vehicles are safe from these things without some sort of AP reduction mechanic to improve their survivability. This is already an insane amount of damage, but you can also expand it with the addition of characters. We haven't even considered the fact that that Apothecary Biologus contributes another two damage attack into the mix, and we can also attach additional characters on top. This is because the Apothecary Biologus has a unique 
leader mechanic. Just like a Space Marine Lieutenant, he can actually be attached to a unit in addition to a Captain or Chapter Master. Now, you have to be a Captain or Chapter Master that can attach into a Gravis unit, which is not easy to come by, but there are a couple good examples. Probably the least exciting one is Tor Garadon, who he himself is an absolute beat stick, and he adds another option for ignore cover, but doesn't really stack too well with the combination we're already using. A standard Gravis Captain is also an exciting proposition. He adds rights of battle to the combo, so you can use your Storm of Fire for free, and potentially even be using it while Storm of Firing something else in addition. Also, the Gravis Captain's got three additional shots to add to the mix, and he's kind of a beat stick in melee. He's a good caddy for either uh, Honor Vehement to make a bunch of extra attacks or all buffed by that enhancement, or he's because he's very difficult to kill, he's also another good place to keep Artificer armor, which can stack alongside his half damage effect and means that uh, precision weapons have very little chance of getting through on him. He's also very, very difficult to kill even if the unit does go down. Last but certainly not least is my best boy, Marnius Kalgar. Now this guy is a three model attachment unit. He has two Victrix Honor Guard with him that add actually some survivability to the unit. They themselves have a two plus armor and four plus invulnerable save and the entire unit is slightly faster than the aggressors, which can in some weird way increase your threat range a little bit, especially once you're getting into melee. It does make it difficult for them to embark into transports, and they have some good transport options that we'll discuss after this, but Kalgar doesn't really need transport so much because he gives the unit the ability to advance or fall back and operate normally. So you can shoot and charge even when using non-normal move movement types. Now we're most likely going to be able to advance and shoot because we're putting the unit in Devastator Doctrine all the time, but Marnus Kalgar himself is an absolute murder house in melee. He loves to get to melee and his aggressor squad also likes being there as well. So advancing and charging after you unleash these 15 to 20 wounds in the shooting phase is also incredibly important. On top of that, he also makes the combo more efficient by generating you command points over the course of the game. So there's just really no downside to this guy. He's just phenomenal. He also adds a bunch of additional two damage shooting to the unit on top of that. So he actually does also just passively improve their shooting damage output as well. Although his Victrix Honor Guard unfortunately forgot their bolters at home. So those guys don't have any range presence whatsoever. Honestly, Marnius Calgar or the standard Gravis Captain are excellent additions to the unit. The only downside is that you can't take them in Iron Hands and assign Iron Father Feroz to the unit because he lacks the Captain or Chapter Master keyword. So he's not able to wombo combo with the Apothecary Biologus and he kind of makes the entire combo fall apart. If he were able to assign his Feel No Pain or his Bolter Shots into the combo, he would also be an incredibly strong include as well. So how exactly do we get the unit to combat. Again, they are relatively slow, and while they can advance and shoot, that doesn't always save them, especially since they can't usually deploy in an aggressive position. Now, land raiders are the first thing that comes to mind, especially if you're not attaching Marnius Kalgar to the unit. You do need a land raider within at least a capacity of 14, because the Gravis models count as two, generally when embarking onto a transport, and you have six aggressors plus the Apothecary as well. So minimum of 14, up to 16 if you attach a character. This means a Land Raider Redeemer is a good place for just the unit and the Apothecary. If you want to attach an additional captain or something like that, you can be embarking them in a Land Raider Crusader instead. Both of these transports can move 12 inches. They have a higher base movement than a lot of other transports in the game. And in fact, regular Land Raiders, which I only found out <laughs> during recording this video, then they can disembark those models and you can charge afterwards thanks to Assault Ramp. So you can potentially shoot one target to death, charge a second target and get multiple phases of damage out of this unit. Now, the other thing to do is just strategic reserve them. They're a unit that shoots, so so strategic reserving doesn't get screened as easily as other forms of units that are trying to get into melee. With rapid ingress, you can give them a little bit of optionality on where they can attack, and you can save them from enemy anti-heavy infantry shooting. The downside is that obviously they will typically get screened, and that means that the closest models will often be the chaff that your opponent's trying to prevent you from getting good deep strikes with. So you're not gonna be getting plus one AP on what you want because you're gonna have to be shooting over or through normal garbage infantry squads. That said, if you have the rest of your army there who can clear that chaff away so the aggressors can shoot at what they want to, it's not gonna be that big of a deal. So that is always an option for slower units like this. So with that, that is all I have to say about these aggressor boys. Let me know down in the comment section what you think about this unit and if there's they're one that you'll include in your Space Marine army. 30 damage out of a bunch of bolter attacks is absolutely wild. They're one of the best recipients for the bolter discipline combo, and especially since they can get the benefit 
benefits from the Apothecary Biologus. They are incredibly powerful alongside it. And with that, thanks for watching all the way to the end of the video. Thanks as well to everybody who supports the channel, either over on Patreon at patreon.com slash tactical tortoise, YouTube channel members, and Twitch subscribers. All you people are great and I love you. Remember to keep it classy, folks, and have happy wargaming.